Last time on Total Drama The Top 100, Ripper is having a mental crisis over presumably becoming softer with Sanders' influence. Damien and Dwayne's relationship finally has rekindled after Damien put his fears aside, only for his fears to be affirmed by Dwayne immediately being eliminated. Devin and Carrie teamed up with Heather to hopefully eliminate Axel. Blainly decided to try and test Scott's loyalty by having Joe, Lightning, and Topher offer an alliance. To their surprise, Scott actually stuck true to the alliance because of Junior potentially being betrayed. Chase and Priya are teaming up to unlock Chase's true potential. Chase's intentions for why he wants this being as fake as can be expected from Chase. Caleb, Duncan, and Zoe teamed up to create the finalist alliance. Julia found out with MacArthur and are now plotting their revenge. Alejandro and Jacques created a plan to get rid of Jeff, but after Noah clued Jeff in on the plan, things went awry for them. Dakota and Justin were revealed to be working together to make the gender war a thing. Pete and Jerry took a leadership role within the group with Izzy being the assistant leader. In the challenge, it was ultimately Amber Scorpions and Tenacious Earwigs that had to go to elimination, and Mary wanted Damien on his A-game, so she formed a group to eliminate Dwayne while Noah got Topher's phone and showed Millie and everyone else the footage of Alejandro talking bad about Millie. Alejandro thought he was safe because he had an idol, but it turned out that Jock had stolen it, eliminating him. Ripper goes to Bowie and he tells him that he needs his help. Bowie asks why he need him, and Ripper says he needs his edge back. Sanders is making him soft, and he doesn't want to be a nerd. Bowie tells him to calm down. He's still Ripper, he's just not as judgmental. That's a good thing. He's maturing. Ripper says it's not. He's gonna lose Axel at this rate. Bowie tells him to relax. He will make sure Axel still likes him if he promises not to let the old side of him seep through. Ripper says okay, he'll try. Bowie in Confessional says that he doesn't really care about whatever epiphany Ripper is having, but it is shocking that he is changing for the better. Dave asks Scarlet if they should try and recruit Ripper, and Scarlet says that she still doesn't know if he will stay the same or actually change for the better. Dave says that's true, he probably will be the same. Bridget butts into the conversation and says that Ripper is trying to change, they shouldn't be opposed to it. Scarlet says that she doesn't know how long it will last though, if it will last at all. Bridget says that maybe they should just take a risk and bring him in. Mary asks if she can speak to Damien and Damien says that she can go screw herself. Mary tells him to listen and Damien says no, she has to listen to him now. He wanted Dwayne to stay. Throughout all his problems with him, he didn't want him gone. Mary says that the game isn't about him. Dwayne was a useless team member at best and a hindrance at worst. Damien says that Sierra and Cody are an actual threat to the team and Mary says that they actually have their niche uses. Damien needs to grow up. Damien says to screw off, he's done with any alliance with her, and he will make sure she leaves. In confessional, Damien says that Mary has some gall to eliminate Dwayne after they patch things up. He's gonna find an idol, a seal of approval, whatever, to get her eliminated. Lori tells Damien that she's sorry Dwayne is gone. If it makes him feel any better, she voted for Harold. Damien tells her thanks for that. Mickey is exhausted and Axel tells him good work. She will go fetch some water from the stream for him to drink. She leaves and Devin shows up and tells him not to worry, he will make sure Axel leaves. Mickey says that he appreciates what he's trying to do, but Axel has his best interests at heart. Devin tells him that's insane, she's working him to death. Mickey says that he hasn't died though. Devin tells him that won't last for long if he keeps this up. Mickey tells him that he's lived a life where everyone tells him not to do this or not to do that, but Axel believes he can do anything. Sure, it's hard, and sure, sometimes he can't do it, but he's never felt this before. Someone actually believes in him, and he doesn't want to just let that go. Devin is shocked and says that he's just having a heat stroke or something. He'll go get help. Axel comes back and asks if he heard something. Devin in Confessional says that Axel has worked Mickey so hard that he's developed Stockholm Syndrome. He needs to get her out ASAP. Topher goes to Jen and Blainley and says that he's tired of playing second fiddle to Joe. How about they team up? Jen says with all due respect, he's not exactly someone to work with since he'd probably want Lightning to stay. Topher asks why they shouldn't allow him to stay. Lightning is a physical powerhouse with no brains, they can work with that. But Joe? Joe is a traitor who would betray you for the smallest reward. Think about it, Joe is fickle, but him? He will be there for life. Blainly asks if his loyalty is why he's betraying Joe. Topher says that it sounds ironic, but they'd want him and Lightning over Joe and Scott. I mean, it's a no-brainer. 
Topher leaves and Jen says that Topher made some good points and Blaine Lee says that it's not about how long she can last but what will make her look better in the long run on TV. Scott tells Junior that he has to eat and Junior says that his father got voted out. He can't believe they voted him out at the first opportunity. Junior hugs him and says that he's glad Scott's here at least. Scott in confessional says he needs Junior gone. These feelings inside of him are unwanted. How is he supposed to be his evil self when he's busy wanting Junior to be safe? Scott tells him that it will be okay. He didn't know his father, but he's sure he wouldn't want Junior moping around like this. How about we get you something to eat? He caught some squirrel earlier and he's making a stew out of it. Junior says that he's never had that before. Is it good? And Scott says it's the best. Chase asks Priya if hiking for this long is needed, and Priya says that it clears the mind and helps the body. Everyone can use some cardio. Chase says that when he signed up for this, he thought it would be a lot more extreme than this. Priya says that you can't beat the basics. Chase in confessional says he wanted more screen time, but at this point nobody will want to watch him walking for 8 hours. God, this was a serious mistake. Priya in confessional says she really appreciates Chase finally taking the game seriously. He had potential to be a winner, he just had to get his head into the game. And at least he will actually read the guide she made unlike Millie. Chase in confessional says and what about that guide she made for him? He'll never be able to read something that big. It works as a nice footrest though. Katie tells Jay that she misses Sadie, but Jay is a good replacement. Jay says he appreciates that he thinks. Katie says that Sadie told her that they had to be individuals this season and so she has to find a new friend. Sam is too occupied on his games and everyone else strategizes too much but he is adorable. Jay says he wouldn't go that far but Katie says to say what he wants, he's the only one here who seems to be genuine and won't double cross her. Jeff is a bit depressed and Noah says that moping around is his thing, not Jeff's. Jeff says that he's sorry, he just thought the team liked him. Noah says to listen, the strategists aren't going to like him, but he's a good leader despite that. At the end of the day, not everyone is going to like him, but that doesn't mean everyone hates him. And honestly, he's probably the only leader he'd want to be under in the current lineup. Jeff asks if he's serious, and Noah says sure. He'd prefer to be the leader again, but he's probably the least offensive one here. Jock goes to Nichelle and says that they are secured, and Nichelle asks how, and Jock says he played that pendejo Alejandro and stole his immunity idol. Nichelle says that's great. Kelly says that's amazing, they are safe for a long time. Jock in confessional says that he didn't recruit Kelly into the group. Nichelle is overstepping her boundaries already. And Maria asks Millie why she even wanted Alejandro, and Millie says that he made her feel special. Turns out all he wanted from her was a vote. And Maria says that that's the problem. We're the prize. They should be working for us, not the other way around. Millie says she knows that, but something about how hot he was and the way he talked it clouded her mind. Anne Maria says honestly he was a 5 out of 10 on a good day. Don't worry, they don't call me Makeover Maria for nothing. By the end of this, all the guys will want you. Justin is relaxing when Emma comes over and asks to talk to him. Justin says that he appreciates that she asked for permission, but she can do whatever she wants. Emma tells him that she wants to be in an alliance with him. Justin says okay. Emma asks if that's really it, and Justin says whatever. The chances we lose are so minuscule, we may as well do it. Emma asks what's the point of the gender war crap, and Justin says that it's just to keep majority to give people hope, that's all. Eventually merge will come and alliances won't really matter as people will betray each other. Emma asks where this is coming from and Justin says that nobody has actually asked why this exists. She's probably the smartest one here. How about this? She gives up Miles and Ryan and he'll give up Brody and Scary Girl. Emma says that this feels oddly professional. Alright, it's a deal. Justin tells her to just stay silent about this, this is a secret alliance, and Emma says her lips are sealed. Justin says in confessional that at the end of the day, if he can keep the pawns busy with little things, they won't ask the big questions like why he made this happen. So he doesn't mind promoting Emma a bit while still keeping her in the dark enough. Emma says in confessional that she doesn't know what to do. On one hand, she wants to betray Justin, but the deal is so good, that's four eliminations dealt with right there. Rodney and Tyler are searching for food, and Rodney says that him and Lindsay are close, huh? Tyler says that they sure are, they've been dating since season one. Sure, things were rocky at the start, but eventually they got things figured out. Rodney asks if he thinks him and Mary can last, and Tyler says not to worry about it. Just listen to what she has to say and make sure she knows she's important to you. I don't think she's one of the bad ones, unlike. Stephanie comes over and asks what's taking them so long. They were supposed to be back two hours ago with food, and they still haven't come back. And she won't eat any of the slop in the chow hall. Rodney says that he's sorry. Tyler tells her to chill out. Finding food takes time. Stephanie asks what he said to her. Did he really tell her to chill out? How dare he? Just wait till Ryan hears about this. 
She storms off and Rodney tells Tyler thanks for standing up for him and Tyler says that it's no biggie. He hates her more than anyone else on this island. Chris calls the leaders to the chow hall. Chris tells them that this challenge will mean big things to their team, elect their strongest member. If they lose, there will be dire consequences. Now go choose who will compete. Bridget is wondering who to pick and she goes to Bowie and tells him that Chris told her to choose someone to put up in the challenge. It's probably the brunch discussing this, but the bad thing is that he said there would be dire consequences if they lost. Bowie says that's not good, but in reality there's only a few things he could really do. He could send us to a vote, he could eliminate the person we put up and put us into a vote, or he could disband our team. All in all, I think the safest option is putting up B. Bridget asks why B, and Bowie says that neither of them really have a role for B in their alliance, and he was the reason Mike went home, so they may as well. Sierra asks Cody who they should put up in the brunch of discussing this, and Cody says it would be pretty funny to put Lori up, I mean, if they go to elimination, she can go next. Beth is wondering who to pick, and Spud asks what the challenge will be. Beth says it's an eating challenge if she recalls correctly, and Spud says he wants to go. Beth says alright, but only if he's sure, and Spud says he's never been more sure of anything in his life. Scott is wondering who to put up before ultimately sending Lightning. In confessional, Scott says that worst case scenario, Lightning wins and stays. Best case though, they lose and he goes home. Him or Joe? He hasn't decided yet. Ezekiel comes back to the group and says that it's ultimately his decision for who to put up, but he wants to ask who they think the strongest one in the group is. Priya says it's obviously. Z interrupts and says it has to be Gwen or Leonard. Gwen isn't phased by anything. The group cheers for Gwen, but Priya says that maybe they should focus on someone else, someone who actually practiced for total drama their entire life. Ezekiel says where they could find a person like that, and Priya says that she's referring to herself, and Taylor says not to flatter herself. She's nothing compared to Gwen. Priya storms off angrily and in confessional says that nobody respects her here, at least with her cast, they all respected the amount of effort she put in, but here, they seem to not care at all. Eva says that Sam needs to start pulling his weight, he will go. Sam says sure, whatever, and Eva says that maybe he didn't hear her, he will pull his weight in this challenge, otherwise he will go home. Sam says alright, jeez, he heard her the first time. Jeff asks if anyone thinks they can excel in the challenge coming up. Truth be told, this is a huge challenge. Chris said there would be dire consequences if he lost, so I'm putting my trust in whoever thinks they can excel in this challenge. Michelle tells him to stop talking. Risk taking is her specialty. Noah says that he thought quitting was her specialty. Justin tells Miles that she has big shoes to fill in today's challenge. She will be competing, and if she fails, well, she could say goodbye to the team. Miles says that she won't ever lose a challenge and let Justin take majority. Justin in confessional says that it's almost too easy to play these people. Izzy tells the team that it's probably going to be the brunch of discussing this, so they need to make sure they pick the best member for the role. Stephanie asks if she said it was a brunch, like there would be food, and Izzy says there sure will be, and Trent says it's a challenge where teams try to eat the most amount of food. She should try it. Stephanie says she will definitely do it in that case. Izzy says that she will do it for their team then. Lindsay says that she thought the challenge was about eating gross things though, and Trent tells her to shush. In confessional, Trent says that he should feel bad about putting Stephanie up for failure, but Stephanie is getting on everyone's nerves, and for the team's morale, they need her gone. It was the only real option. Chris welcomes the nine competitors to the challenge. Chris tells them that this challenge will have the biggest stakes yet. Only one of you will be returning back to your team. This is the brunch of disgustingness. You will have to eat increasingly disgusting foods cooked by Master Chef Hatchet, and if you refuse to eat it, then you are eliminated. The first one to quit will give their team an extra painful punishment. First up, how about some bovine balls? Stephanie says big whoop, she'd eat Ryan's meatballs if it meant staying in longer. Chris asks if they can actually do that, and Chef says probably not. Lori tells Miles that she is going to try and be a better vegan from now on. They should quit together. Miles says that she commends her. On the count of three, they'll quit. One, two, three. Lori says that she quits while Miles eats the meatball. Lori says that she can't believe she'd do that, and Miles says that she's sorry, but she needs to make it through this. Lori says that the game has really corrupted her, as Chris says that, Lori, you are the only one here who didn't partake in the meal, and as a result, you were eliminated. But you also were the first one eliminated. So, there will be an extra punishment for your team. 
Lori says whatever. They can enjoy being looked down upon by Mother Nature before leaving. Lori in confessional says it's a bummer that she has to say goodbye, but maybe she can spend some time with Dwayne and grow as a person unlike that traitor Miles. Next up is a live grasshopper pizza and a spicy jellyfish sauce with live anchovies. By the way, if you puke, you are also out, and if you are the last person to finish your slice, you are out. Sam finishes his slice and says that honestly it wasn't that bad. Gwen says that Z would have loved this challenge. Her on the other hand, she finishes the slice reluctantly. Nichelle says that pizza has a lot of carbs in it, can they make sure it's gluten free? Chris asks if she knows what challenge she's in and Nichelle says she knows, she just wants to make sure it won't ruin her diet to eat this. Chris says good news, you won't have to worry about it because everyone else has eaten their slice. Nichelle, you may have the lamest eliminations in the entire series. Nichelle says in confessional that this is so messed up, they will be hearing from her lawyers for not giving her special accommodations for her diet. Chris brings out the next course, earthworm spaghetti with hairballs and covered in slime. Spud says that if they close their eyes it tastes like spaghetti. Sam is gaming to preoccupy himself while eating it, B is the only one who hasn't finished it by the time it's over and Chris says that B had a good run, but he's out. B in confessional shrugs his shoulders. Chris brings out the next dish, French bunion soup with hangnail crackers. Due to gaming while eating, Sam is the last one to finish and Chris says he's out, and Sam says whatever, he only showed up because it was in the contract not to actually compete. Chris says he knows, that's why he didn't take his gaming systems away. Now get out and let the winners play. Chris says that this will be his favorite. Last time they didn't eat this, but maybe this time with so much on the line, you will. Gwen says he wouldn't, and Chris says that it's hot dogs made out of dolphin meat, and this time if you all don't eat it, you all will be eliminated. Spud says this is messed up, and Gwen says that she agrees. Miles says she can't do this before crying, and Lightning says he doesn't care about no fish before eating it, and Stephanie says this is the first edible thing today before chowing down on it. Gwen says they're inhumane, and Chris asks if there will be any more takers, and Spud says he'll take the rest of the pizza, and Chris says not good enough. Gwen, Spud, Miles, you're all out. Gwen says in confessional that she got played by Chris, but in a weird way it feels cathartic. She got out before the game became cutthroat, and she actually had a sorta of good time with her team. Stephanie, Lightning, you two are the last remaining contestants. As you know, only one can return, and the final challenge will be drinking blended cockroaches. The one to drink the most will be victorious. They both begin and they both start off strong and are on even pace, but near the end Lightning grabs her arm as she reaches over to grab one from his side and he yells for her to grab her own before Stephanie knocks him over and she finishes the rest. She jumps around excited, she's won before saying uh oh and getting squeamish, she then vomits on the floor. Lightning does so as well after Stephanie and so do Chris and Chef. Stephanie says that she drank more and Lightning threw up as well so she technically won right. Chris says that she did throw up first, so despite winning the tiebreaker, she did lose in the end because she couldn't hold it down. Lightning says sure yeah, don't celebrate before the game is over. Stephanie says that she gave Lightning the win, and Lightning says what sure ever, she's the loser and he won. Chris says that Lightning can go back to his team. Stephanie says in confessional that if she didn't have to babysit her team the entire time, she would have had the energy to win. Lightning says in confessional that he took home the gold. Chris tells the Amber Scorpions that he did say there would be a punishment for the first person to lose, and sadly, Lori was the first to lose. As a result, Amber Scorpions are no more. Sierra asks if he's serious and Chris says dead serious, but she can send the members wherever she'd like, but the teams cannot exceed 10 members. Sierra says that they can all choose for themselves, but her and her Cody Bear will be going to the Tenacious Earwigs. Dawn says that she's been interested in something, she will go to Ravenous Spiders. Chris says that the rest of you may have dodged a bullet with that one. Ella says she would like to go to the Excited Ants. Damien says he will go to the Flaming Cockroaches. Mary says that she will go to the Silent Crickets for no particular reason, of course. Harold says that she's such a liar, she wants to see Rodney. Ennui says he will go to Drowning Mosquitoes, Crimson has already told him everything about that team. Chris says that just leaves Harold, where would he like to go? Harold says that honestly, he will go to Hopping Stink Bugs, they need his mad skills. Chris says to take one more look at the Amber Scorpions because they will be gone after tonight, and Harold says it's been a good thing despite how short it's been. Leonard tells the group that they must face the reality of the situation, Gwen has fallen in combat tonight. They were wrong to send the rogue in by herself. Let us commence the honorable funeral for our teammate that fought to the bitter end. Chase asks Priya if she's doing alright, and Priya asks why he isn't with the others, and Chase says that honestly he didn't know Gwen for that long so he doesn't really care. How is she? 
Priya says that it just doesn't feel like anyone's taking her seriously or even likes her. Jay says that's not true, and Priya says if it's not, how come nobody listens to her when she says that she'd be the best suited for every challenge? An awkward silence goes between them before Jay says that he likes her, and Priya tells him thanks. And that's that for episode 14 of Total Drama The Top 100. What did you think? Question of the week, do you think Dawn made the wrong choice going to a team as dangerous as the ravenous spiders? Why or why not? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time on Total Drama The Top 100.